through walls, go through anything for you. I mean, there's a lot of uh, a lot. And Will Malcolm is uh, is leading the team. He's on pace to get 107 points this year. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of talent, and defensively, they've they've really come together. I mean, they've got some. They play a, a nice team approach. I think uh, you got to give Steve Cole some credit there for uh, being the defensive coach and how well they're playing, getting a lot of guys like Evan Messenger who's having an. I mean, I was going to say a career season, but I mean, this is his career pretty much this season. He's struggled to get into the league and, and not because he wasn't a good player. I think I, when I talked to Tracy Klusky earlier in the year, he said, I said, what's the difference? He said, he just believes in himself now. He just had to believe how good he was. And uh, he comes in with that confidence and Evan Messenger has been great. And they've got, you know, um, a bunch of guys. I mean, Matt Hossack is one of the best defenders in the league and people don't really talk about him because his brother's just probably the best defenseman in the league, right? But uh, Matt is really good, the captain of Panther City. You've got Connor Sellers that they picked up. They paid a lot for Connor Sellers, a, uh, a player in a first-round draft pick um, to get Connor Sellers, but he's really good. You know, I mean, they've got a lot of guys. Dylan Hutchison is a guy we've talked about before who's really come into his own, another guy who took a while to establish himself. But in this defense, he's playing very well. He's killing penalties. I mean, they have a lot going on in Panther City, and and it's uh, it's been a lot of growth, a lot of credit to Bob Hamley, the GM, and, and Tracy Kolesky, the head coach, and the the uh, you know assistant coaches. And, yeah, they're, they're a tough team. And I, I think Nick Damude is close to being – at the level of the very top goalies in the league. And I think on his good days, he absolutely is. Or his, when he's on, he is on and he is hard to beat. When he's not, he's, he, you can be down by a bunch early because if he's <laughs> shaky and, and that's natural for young goalies, it happens. But I think Damien is not as consistent as the, as the top goalies are at this point. No, I, uh, the nice thing about like where he's at and where Dunkerley's at is they're on teams that can afford to let them get through that kind of slump. Like nobody was expecting New York to dominate this year. They expect him to be better, obviously, but you know, you, you'd obviously never want to have those games, but you're not, you know, you're not expecting that team to win every game in the season or even be able to like where it's even close where you would think every night going in, okay, they're definitely going to win. They're definitely going to win. True. But doesn't that make it more important that you're only be consistent if the rest of the team, you don't know what you're going to get from them. It does. But it, it's hard to uh, it's hard to get somebody that late, you know, you're to find an old goalie and get a trade for him who's really good is yeah. way harder than well, I don't even no, know if it's way harder because trying to pick, yeah, yeah, trying to pick the guy and trying to decide when you pull him, when you let him <laughs> wait, he needs to get his lumps, and when you cut your losses and you're just like this kid ain't working out. It's a yeah. uh, it's a tough tough spot to be in, and I I yeah, always yeah. say the goalie's the most underrated position on the floor. So important. There's a dearth of goalies. There aren't enough goalies to keep up with expansion. There's, I think there's lots of forwards. There's still lots of great forwards that we've seen. Some of the guys playing in the Arena Lacrosse League who are ready to go, you know, and, and can step in and play in the National Lacrosse League and contribute. There are lots of defenders who are, uh, you know, who can go in and, and do good things and, and play a role that, and, but I mean, goalie is just so isolated and so exposed out there that if anything's going wrong, it just, it's magnified and it's hard. Goalies tend to mature later anyway. So, you know, you see these guys who uh, look at all the young goalies who are doing really well and how many of them are still with the team that they started with. I mean, Cameron Dunkley was drafted by Saskatchewan who now has Thomas Kaisek come in to replace Lane Rushka on the active roster because they've gone through all Lane Rushka was drafted by Georgia. Thomas Kaiser, Saskatchewan did draft him last year. We'll see. I think he's a great young goalie. We'll see how it works out. Um Damien started out in San Diego. I think he, Damien start. I think he was San Diego because Kells was got, Calgary, he, right? Yes, Landon Kells was in Calgary. Now that's a little different because He's behind Christian Del Bianco, and you're not playing behind Christian Del Bianco. <laughs> but Las Vegas gets him, and he's clearly a very bright young goalie prospect. You know, Doug Jameson has stayed in uh, in Albany, so he's a, an example of a guy who's stuck. But in that same draft, eight, 17, 18, 19, or 18, 19, 20, the picks were Kevin Orleman, Warren Hill, and Doug Jameson. Jameson took a while, stuck around, was one of goalie of the year. Warren Hill, um, he never played. I mean, got activated a bit with Rochester, but he didn't, or with uh, Georgia, he didn't play for them. He went to Rochester as a backup and then eventually got a starting chance and uh, took over from Angus Goodleaf, actually, in the, in the middle of the season there. The last year before Rochester moved to Halifax, he's been very good for them. Um, 
up and down the last couple of seasons, but he's a good goalie, really solid guy back there for them. And Orleman has bounced around, right? I mean, he was taken he was by Buffalo for a little uh, bit. Buffalo, year. yeah, wound up in in Panther City. Um, I thought Orleman was going to be the starter coming in Panther City. I thought that was his big chance. He was going to develop because he went to Georgia and then wound up in Panther City, and it just didn't uh, just didn't work out. Dame Ude stepped up and just grabbed that job. I mean, Dame Ude earned that, and uh, you know Orleman's bounced around and. Now he's in Rochester where he, he's out right now. He's had some shoulder uh, injuries and surgery and that. So he won't be back till next year. But, uh, you know, these young goalies, it takes a while. It's very challenging. Um, yeah. So it's, uh, yeah. It's tough. It's tough. <laughs> and, yeah. and nobody ever yeah. wants to sacrifice a game because each one of these games is so important. These jobs are so hard to get as a coach or a GM. You yeah. can't really afford to wait usually. Not every team is committed as the uh, ownership group that is now the Firewolves is to Glenn Clark. And I mean, and now yeah. you're seeing it pay dividends. So, I mean, you keep people for yeah. a while and you believe in a, uh, you know, a vision and then now you're getting to see the the fruits of it, but it, it's so hard for these teams because you have a bad season or two and all the fans are, I mean, look, yeah. everybody's ready day. They want his head on a platter and it's like, yeah. guys, they went yeah. big a couple of years ago. You do, it was yeah. going to cost them if it didn't, even if it worked out and they won a championship, yeah. you know, you just gambled half of your future to, to get there. So it's like, uh, yeah, I, I think Philadelphia has got some, some long-term issues they're going to have to address. <laughs> and it's going to be challenging. I think Vegas does as well, you know, as far as young teams go, but I think, uh, you know, the example of Glenn Clark is a good one because, you know, like you said, they've had a ton of patience. He explained to them, Hey, I've got, you know, it's a five-year plan. Here's how we go. And they're like, okay, we buy in. And uh, it was, it, it, you know, lots of, teams say they're going to buy into that plan until the reality hits. And I, I talked to Glenn Clark before the, uh, or around the draft and said, Hey, it's pretty exciting to have the first pick. Uh, you know, obviously you want to be better. And um, you don't get the first pick very often. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, in theory, you can get it again next year. He's like, you know, if we have the first pick again next year, I'm not going to be the guy making it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Like, you know, you don't go back to back to last places and even with a very patient, yeah. I, I don't I think if, if Albany was 